Hey guys, Tom here. I've made quite a few projects over the past couple of years and today I thought I'd show you my top five sci-fi and steampunk projects. Before we get into it, I just want to say that uh, some of the footage is from a few months ago before I started YouTube. So there's a bit of vertical video and some not great audio. So apologies for that. So first up, we've got this big vial of some sort of poison or bioweapon. And if I just lower the lights, we can see that it actually glows under UV light. Uh, quite an interesting effect. This was actually a very quick project that I made as a gift for someone. I actually just bought the glass vial with the steel lids from Etsy. It's uh, sold as a sort of prop from Alien. You can buy it with a little xenomorph inside it, but I just bought the, the vial. I designed the label myself based on some similar designs I found online. And then I printed it on some regular label paper. You could use regular A4 paper, but obviously that doesn't produce a very label-like finish. So I coated it in PVA glue diluted with some water. And then dried it with a hair dryer. And that adds this subtle glossy sheen that makes it look more like a proper label on a product. It also makes it waterproof which stops the ink from running if filling up the vial. So I cut out the labels and stuck them on each side of the glass tube. And then I filled it with water from the tap. And so here's the secret for getting the glowing UV effect. All you need is to take apart a regular highlighter, get the ink reservoir out, and squeeze a few drops into your water and it flourishes under UV. I also tried out these submergible green LEDs, but I prefer the effect with just the UV light, personally. Next up, we have this tabletop nuclear reactor sort of thing. Uh, obviously, it doesn't actually resemble any kind of nuclear reactor, it's just a steampunk reimagining of one. For this I just wanted to make something with as many sort of cool switches on the front as possible. I'm sure you've seen one of those sequences in a film where they're say launching a missile and they have to turn all the buttons on in the right order like putting in a couple of keys at the same time and pressing the big red buttons. So that's sort of what I was going for with this. I wired it up in such a way that you do have to turn all the switches in the right order and yeah wiring it up was a bit of a nightmare because it's all so close together it's very fiddly i made this thing over a year ago and i've lost all the original footage of me testing it but i have this early edit of me showing how it works i made this nuclear reactor prop out of a plastic tub and a load of switches there's a piston in the middle holding the lid open you have to flick the switches in the correct order to turn it on these four activate the alarm on the side panel makes the coolant overheat and start boiling. And this panel creates flashes of green radiation. To number three, we've got this uh, steampunk emergency reactor shutdown control panel thing. It's kind of related to the previous one, complete with a classic big red panic button and this oscillating dial, which I can't really take the credit for. I actually bought this dial as a kit off Etsy again. It's mostly 3D printed and it just all came disassembled. And so I painted it all myself and put it together. The rubber band controlling it did give out after a few weeks, which is unfortunate, but I should be able to fix that at some point, hopefully. And as you can see, there's actually steam coming out of this emergency steam vent. Of course, it's not actually steam at all, but 
some water vapor created by this little ultrasonic atomizer that just vibrates the water. It's not a fog machine, it doesn't need any special chemical or like vape liquid. It just uses, you know, regular room temperature water. I think they're for like a vivarium, you know, lizard tanks and enclosures to keep the moisture up. And the big red button doesn't actually do anything. It's just something to press if you're panicking to make you feel better. So number four, we've got this sort of steampunk ray gun thing I made. Uh, this is another gift that I made for someone. It's gone through several iterations over the years. Um, I made it probably two years ago. Here's some photos from the build process. So we started off with this revolver-like copper barrel design on the end. But then my little brother, who I made it for, wanted it to be a glowing crystal on the end. So we made a resin crystal using a mold and drilled in a green LED into the base of it. And that made a really good effect. We attached a motor to that. So the crystal rotated when you press the trigger. And then he wanted it to be more of a Ghostbuster style design. So he came up with a plan for this backpack with dials and an arc reactor in it. <laughs> The arc reactor, we'd bought a kit off Wish a few years ago and built that together. I modified the gun so we could connect the backpack to it via a tube, similar to the Ghostbuster guns. And we swapped out the rotating crystal on the end of the gun for this time, uh, just uh, some blue LEDs, sort of create a ray of blue light. And finally, number five, we've got this antimatter mine that I created as part of a escape room game. Essentially, you had to follow instructions to defuse the mine and stop the timer. So the final part of the game was to cut the wires in the correct order. And once you cut the final wire, if you've got it right, it will stop the timer. I made this prop for a space themed escape room game. It's based on those old World War II sea mines. To solve the puzzle, you have to follow instructions to disarm the core. And then cut these wires in the correct order to disable the timer. One, four, this one. Stop! How did you do that? It's really off, isn't it? You did it. What the? And as you can hear, my brother was very impressed with that. But all I did was connect the final wire into the battery circuit of the timer, uh, which is slightly risky because if it cut the final wire accidentally at the wrong time, it would have diffused it uh, early. But I was watching him do it, so made sure they cut the final one at the right time. And uh, yeah, that worked quite well. So that was my five favorite steampunk and sci-fi projects. Um, if you've been working on any of your own projects, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.